So the Liberals often talk about affordability. Why won't you cancel the upcoming tax hike if you want, if you care about affordability? Why won't you cancel the upcoming tax hike if you care about affordability? You gotta, you're speaking to the wrong person. You gotta speak to the minister. Yeah, but you're one of the Liberals, so why won't you cancel them? I'm not a minister. I don't know if you got your information. Right? All right, yeah, I know you're not a minister. All right, well, then I'm going to ask you another so question. I Yesterday, conservatives... go to the minister and speak with the minister about that exact question. Can you ask him to come outside to talk to us? That's for your job as, uh, as somebody who... Well, we're not allowed to go inside because your party blocks us. So can you ask him? The door is open. No, we're going to get arrested, sir. <laughs> oh, my... Hey everyone, William Diaz here with Rebel News. Recently, the Conservative Party brought forward a motion in the House of Commons that uh, would condemn threatening tweets written by a PPG, Parliamentary Press Gallery accredited journalist. Uh, also, we know the Liberals always talk about affordability, but they are the ones that want to raise taxes and, uh, and hide the carbon tax as well. So do they really care about affordability? And finally, the Arrive Canada app was uh, recently suspended, but we all know the Liberal government refuses to delete all the private information of people in inside the app. So will the Conservative Party members pledge and promise to delete these private medical informations once they are in power in 2025, if they come in power? Let's go find all of that here on Parliament Hill. Mr. Algebra, yesterday the Conservatives brought forward a motion to denounce the threatening tweets of a accredited journalist. Why did some Liberals say nay to that? How are you today? Do you not care about the safety of politicians in the House of Commons? How are you today? I'm great. How about you? Are you able to answer our question? I'm enjoying this walk. Why do you refuse to denounce the journalists that threaten conservative politician? Are you doing well? Are you able to answer our question or is that just not in your mandate? You know, conservatives always answer our question. Why can't you do that? I'm glad you're doing well. You're not able to, eh? I'm really happy for you and I wish you success in your career. What changed in the science between now and in two days in terms of lifting the Arrive Cat app? Or was it just political science? Oh, you took your glasses off. What? You took your glasses off. Yeah. That's good. So are you able to answer? You're not able. Is it intelligence or just you don't want to? <laughs> All right, last question from me. Uh, you know, you always talk about affordability or liberal parties say they want to fight for affordability, yet you're planning on raising the taxes and con continuing the, uh, the carbon tax. Why won't you cut the taxes? Watch this. Have a nice day. Why won't you cut the taxes? All right, sir, have a great day. Good luck with this parliamentary session. So Liberals often talk about affordability and making life more affordable to Canadians. Why won't the Liberal cancel the upcoming tax hikes? Uh, <laughs> good question, but there are no tax hikes. So you, you say there are no planned tax hikes for Canadians in the upcoming months and years? No, EI contributions and uh, CPP contributions are going up, but that's to fund the Canada Pension Plan so that Canadians have a retirement. So can you promise right here that there will be no tax hike as is it just what you said? Uh, <laughs> well, no, I can't promise. To, uh, I'm not, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Mr. Speaker, Canadians cannot afford to pay for this government's reckless inflationary spending and deficits. This government's planned tax hikes will drive up the cost of living, will affect rural Canadians, low-income families and vulnerable populations the most. This government is out of touch with the struggles of everyday Canadians. So I ask my question again, will the government end their planned tax increases on gas, home heating and groceries? Also, uh, yesterday there was a conservative motion that was brought forward to condemn the threatening tweets of an accredited journalist. Why did some Liberal MPs say nay to that motion? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Do you agree with the people that said nay to that motion? Um, I'm not really aware of the, uh, the incident, so I can't really speak to it. Well, I appreciate the uh, uh, motion proposed by my colleague in the Bloc Québécois. And in light of that, in relation to the motion that we just adopted and that uh, all parliamentarians are uh, committed to dealing with uh, threats and intimidation. I, there have been discussions amongst the House leader, leaders, and I hope that I will get unanimous consent for the following motion. But the House condemned the threatening remarks of Dale Smith, a member of the Parliamentary Press Gallery, who responded through a tweet to a question proposed in the House by the member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, stating that, quote, 
When horses are this lame, you shoot them. All those opposed to the honourable member moving the motion will please say nay. No, we don't have unanimous consent. Well, the motion was brought forward yesterday in the House of Commons. Yeah. So there was a journalist that said that Garnet Genuis was lame for his comments and when a horse is lame, you should shoot him. Oh, I when, remember, it's something about the speech that he gave that yeah, someone exactly. said was lame. So I think they were talking so about did, the speech. So do you condemn the people that said nay? Thank you. Euh, oui, donc, euh, vous savez, les libéraux parlent souvent justement de baisser les taxes, de, de, en fait, non, pas de baisser les taxes, de rendre la vie plus euh, affordable pour tout le monde, de faire en sorte que l'économie soit meilleure. Donc, pourquoi est-ce que les libéraux vont pas baisser les taxes justement pour aider les Canadiens? C'est, c'est pas ma, ma décision. Euh, je dois dire que j'approuve pas tout ce qui se fait, mais... Est-ce que vous pensez que les taxes devraient être baissées? Je le pense. Oui. Well, merci beaucoup de votre temps, monsieur. Mm-hmm. Sir, the Liberals always talk about, you know, affordability and affordability of Canadians. Why, why won't you cancel the tax hikes that are coming? Why won't the government cancel the tax hikes to make the life of Canadians finally more affordable? You're not able to answer. Conservatives are always able to answer me. Why can't Liberal? I don't give interviews to Rebel News. You don't give interviews to Rebel News? All right, well, let me ask another question. Uh, you know, Yesterday, the Conservatives brought forward a motion to denounce threatening tweets from a journalist towards a Conservative MP. Why did some Liberals say no to that? Do you not care about the safety of politicians in the House of Commons? Let me ask you once again, do you not care about the safety of politicians in the House of Commons? All right, have a great day, sir. Uh, you know, the Liberals often talk about affordability, making life more affordable, so why won't you cancel the upcoming tax hikes? You have a good weekend. Why won't you cancel the upcoming tax hikes? <laughs> I said I hope you have a good weekend. Why do you feel it is affordable, for, it is okay for 16-year-olds to vote? Why did you vote in favor of uh, Bill C-210 yesterday? Uh, if you can drive a car and you can pay taxes, the job. When I was 16, I had a job, I was paying taxes, so I felt it was fair. So you agree a 16 years old could, should have the right to vote? That's why I voted that way. Sure. All right, thank you, sir. Have a good day. Yesterday, the Conservative Party brought forward a motion that would, uh, you know, condemn the threatening tweets of an accredited journalist. Why did some Liberal MPs vote nay to that? I don't know, and I'm not sure that there were Liberal MPs that voted nay. Yeah, some people voted nay. It's on record, ma'am. So why would uh, do you condemn the Liberal MPs that voted nay to the motion that would condemn the threatening tweets of an accredited journalist? I did not vote nay. But do you condemn those that did vote nay? Thank you for not voting nay, by the way. But do you condemn those that did vote nay? I condemn the Iranian regime's brutal harassment mm-hmm. and violence. I don't think that this is the issue that Canadians... Sir, so recently, Jack Meet Singh, um, you know, tried to condemn Pierre Poilier for um, calling David, David Akin a liberal heckler, yet Jack Meet Singh always refuses to take questions from rebel news reporters, from our female rebel news reporters. Mm-hmm. Do you see some hypocrisy in his statement? You should talk to Jack Meet. Thanks. But what, what do you think of being in the same party as a leader who acts like that? Oh, I'm very proud to be in a party with Jagmeet Singh. Jagmeet, who refuses to take polite questions from He's reporters? He's a great principled leader, and uh, I'm very proud to be in the caucus with such a strong leader who cares so much about working Canadians. And He's not able to answer our questions. Job. Uh, talk to Jagmeet about that. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You know, Jagmeet Singh condemned uh, Pierre Poilievre's uh, comments towards David Akin saying when Poilievre said who? that Akin, Jack Mead Singh yeah. said that you know it was weak for Pierre Poilievre to call David Akin a liberal heckler, right? I, I watched the, the the video and uh, you know from one perspective it sounded like someone was interrupting him, and then when I saw the the cutaway and this is an important thing for people to do sometimes you you see one view and it looks like okay maybe it was uh, maybe it was some heckling. And then I saw the full view of what happened and it was just a question, are you going to take questions or why aren't you taking questions? And it seemed a pretty normal thing, something that's happened to me before. People ask if I'm going to take questions. It seems like a pretty standard thing if I'm going to come before um, a group of folks, professionals whose job it is to to write um, the news that they're going to ask me some questions about my positions. I kind of expect that. 
And the fact that instead of taking questions or saying, no, I'm not going to take questions, simple answer, uh, to, to make it into an attack um, seemed a bit uh, weak as a, as a response. Like, why not just say no or say, yeah, I'll take questions. And so it seemed like a bit of a weak approach to then somehow make it into someone's politi partisan political position. And I think it's a, an example of a, of a lack of the strength to be able to to be able to stand up and say what you want and, and defend your position. Right. I'm sure that you agree with uh, Jack Mead on that. But uh, Jack Mead always avoids questions from rebel news reporters. And he always refuses to take questions from nice female rebel news reporters. So do you believe it is hypocritical for Jack Mead to say such a thing? I don't think I understand your question. Alexandra pour Rebel News. Historiquement, le NPD s'est opposé aux grandes sociétés pharmaceutiques et aux sociétés milliardaires qui se sont enrichies grâce aux blocages comme Amazon et Walmart. Et le NPD était très attentif aux libertés civiles, y compris en étant pro-choix sous son propre corps. Pourquoi avez-vous embrassé les milliardaires de Big Pharma et abandonné votre philosophie de pro-choix? Uh, merci, mais je ne réponds pas aux questions de Rebel News. Est-ce que vous pensez que euh, c'est une option de ne pas répondre à un média juste parce que le fait que vous nous aimez pas? Nous devons. Merci so Jack Mead always refuses to answer questions. He calls Rebel News white supremacists, even though I'm Latino and we have a bunch of Latino people, Jewish people, Russian people, Muslim people even. Um, and he calls us those names, but then he says that it is weak for Pierre Poilievre to call David Akin a liberal heckler. Don't you see the hypocrisy in his uh, comments? I don't think you want my statements here, so... Well, do you want to explain what you think about that situation? I don't think you want to actually hear what I have to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, say what you want. You can schedule a meeting with my office. <laughs> So it's we'll actually not me. It. It's actually not me that doesn't want to hear your comments. It's you that doesn't want to say them. <laughs> you don't want to hear them, and I. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. You have 30 seconds I'm to say them. Being confrontational right now, and I don't appreciate that. Okay, well, listen. And so you... I feel that there's an opportunity for us to have this conversation. If you send a list of your questions, I'd be happy to respond. But right now, you know, it's not an appropriate setting. No, but you just said that I don't want to answer them. But right now, I'm giving you the floor. Right now, I'm going to stop speaking. You have the floor to give me your, your thoughts on that situation. You already gave me the thoughts, and you're going to clip those thoughts out. And all I can say is, you know, journalism has to be one that everyone has an opportunity to speak to. And I haven't seen that. And so I hope that we can have more respectful dialogue in the future. But that hasn't happened today. Well, thanks for giving me your thoughts, Rydie, and I appreciate it. Recently, it came out that the arrived cannab is finally going to be scrapped, well, yes. going to be suspended yes. by the Liberals. Um, however, the Liberals didn't say they're going to delete um, all the private information that's on the app. If a Conservative government is elected next election, can you pledge to delete the private information of Canadians that were coerced into entering it in the app? We'll do better than that. We're going to redo the, the Privacy Act, which governs the government in all privacy. We're not sure just how much private information the government has and uses. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, on a whole slew of apps and applications and uh, from the RCMP to CSIS to uh, CSEs and our goal is to protect Canadians private rights. Yeah. There's a bill coming at C27 that I'm leading and the whole premise of that is to protect your private rights and, and, and we believe it should be uh, the Supreme Court has, has noted that's that should be mm -hmm. our basic fundamental rights in, in, ingrained in, in, uh, in our Charter of Rights, and we believe that. This yeah. bill doesn't go far enough, and so we'll be opposing it to to, uh, and if it goes to committee, we'll be we'll be making massive rewrites of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, your fundamental rights of Canadians are not being adhered to. We don't have enough laws, and certainly we need to rewrite the Privacy Act. And certainly, we're going to be the only government that stands up for your fundamental private rights as Canadians. Please. Yeah, I think we've always been very clear about the data should belong to Canadians, and uh, one of our biggest concerns around uh, the Arrive Can app is that collection of, of data and what it's used for. Uh, we've seen, even though they've, they've given many rationales, of, uh, and, and even we've heard too the rationale to keep it, mm -hmm. um, but uh, being former member of Access to Information, Privacy and Ethics Committee where we dealt with the privacy and, and data, yeah. uh, absolutely. So um, concerned where this government's going though, seems like they're keeping on going down this uh, road yeah. of, of collecting more data than less, mm -hmm. and Canadians need to understand that they're uh, their data might end up in a place where they don't want it to be. So there you have it, folks. Once again, for the third time in my career as a journalist here in Ottawa, I caught Mr. Omar al -Gabar, who once again couldn't answer a single question. You saw what the Conservatives had to say about pledging to delete the private information of people in the authoritarian Arrive Can app. And while well, you saw what the Liberals had to say, they're 
pretty much in denial, pretty funny to watch. Thank you for watching, this was William Diaz here with Rebel News. If you find value in what I do, you want me to continue to be able to ask politicians the tough questions that while mainstream media reporters will never ask because they're so afraid of losing their funding, please head on to ottawareports.com and consider making a donation. That way I will be able to come right here on Parliament Hill and ask the tough questions that mainstream media will never ever ask.